Back in 2009, Marvel decided to create different miniseries all in a noir setting. Released in 2010, written by Scott Snyder. Holy shit, Scott Snyder wrote this? With art by Manuel Garcia, this is Iron Man Noir. This book opens up in the middle of the jungle. The narrator is, uh, well, narrating and talking about what this small part of people is doing way out in the jungle. They're after this, uh, like, jade mask in a Mayan tomb is what it boils down to. And they just found it. It is here we are introduced to the characters. Tony Stark, James Rhodes, Dr. Giletta Nefaria, a character you know is definitely not gonna be an evil villain, and Virgil Muncy, everybody's favorite character. I think you know where that's going. So Stark opens up the tomb by like cutting himself and letting blood drip into the mouth of a stone dog, and suddenly a hole beneath him opens up, causing everyone to fall in dark pits of water. Oh. <laughs> What pranksters those Mayans were. <laughs> so, Rhodey, Giletta, and Virgil all wait around while Tony swims around in the water. Finally, they arrive in a giant glowing cavern with a massive Mayan pyramid in the center. The reason it's glowing, by the way, is because it's like, there's a bunch of fungi around in the cave, and also it's really flammable. So Tony immediately runs to the top and finds the Jade Mask. Then he slowly reaches for it, puts it on his face, turns to Gioletta and says, Smokin! Yeah, just kidding. He just takes the mask off and then Gioletta holds a handgun to him. Oh no, who could have ever seen this coming? Then Rhodey holds a handgun to her. Then somehow, I, I guess they swam. Dr. Heinrich Zemo and Baron Strucker, along with like some Nazis, appear behind them. Virgil, the narrator, begins writing down what is happening in his notebook when he gets shot in the head. So then Gioletta puts on the mask and Tony grabs his torch and drops it igniting the entire pyramid. Tony and Rhodey both escape by like blowing a hole and being sucked through the water current into the ocean where they are rescued by two attractive women. In New York, Tony is answering questions to the press about the death of Virgil. You see, in this universe, Tony Stark is an adventurer who has a magazine called Marvels, a magazine of men's adventures. And it's about his adventures around the world. And Virgil was the guy who like, documented all of it. So after the press is all kicked out, Tony goes to a meeting. A meeting with Pepper Potts. Tony's like, Rhodey, what did I say about having some sexy dame as an assistant? Not again. Pepper walks over to him and tells him that she isn't applying for an assistant job, but as the new chronicler of Marvels. And obviously, Tony's not too sure about it since she's a woman, but Pepper informs him that she uses the pen name of Frank Finley, who I guess is some famous writer. Or like a well-established writer or something. They don't really explain it. Anyway, she gets the job and we cut to a Stark Labs building. Tony and Rhodey walk inside and are greeted by... A man in a giant suit of armor demanding Tony get on the table. Then it's revealed it's just Jarvis, so Tony lies down on the table and has his, like, heart recharged. Later that night in his office, Tony opens a drawer in his desk that Gioletta wanted for herself, I guess? And inside, he finds information on the sunken city of Atlantis. About a month later, Tony Stark, Pepper Potts, and Rhodey sail on a pirate boat named the Lady Dorma, piloted by Captain Namor. Tony and Pepper talk about what they're going to look for, and then they talk about Virgil and how much he loved the job, and then Namor calls out to Stark. Tony, Namor, and Rhodey mysteriously talk about the ship's readings of the area, and Namor tells Tony that the price has gone up. Then Tony has a double-page spread of him telling Pepper the history of Atlantis. Basically, they were incredibly advanced for the era, and the Atlanteans had discovered a secret power source, a metal called orichalcum. And finally, he tells her that researchers believe that a giant orichalcum trident that a statue of Poseidon held in the center of town created a vortex that destroyed the city. Tony then goes on to talk about his father. You see, Howard Stark fought in World War I, and he even fought with Jarvis in like one battle or something. But he was taken prisoner by the Germans and held in a POW camp for six months. After the war, he got back home and began working on an invention. 
a robot, a remote tank even, because he didn't want people to have to go through what he did. And it's kind of sad, because whenever, like, young Tony asked his dad if he was okay, Howard would just sort of look down at him and say, I'm fine, son. Why don't you... Why don't you go have an adventure? And that's exactly what Tony Stark did for his entire life. The next day, Namor's crew lower Tony's submarine to the water with Tony, Pepper, Rhodey, and Namor all inside. Also, the submarine is named Happy Hogan. The submarine glides through a valley and in the distance, a light is seen. And then, they find a giant mountain of wrecked ships dating back from ancient times all the way to the modern era, and surrounded by ancient Greek buildings. And then they venture inside, where they find an air pocket. They surface to find a giant statue of Poseidon holding his glowing orichalcum trident. What a coincidence that that tunnel led right here. Tony races outside of the submarine and is followed by Namor, and then... Tony tests out the trident by, like, placing a battery, causing a weird electrical light show. So, Tony, Rhodey, and Namor rip out the trident and just hop back in the sub and go back to the surface. Where they find the Nazis! I bet you're wondering how they knew where Tony was. Well, you see, Gioletta, who is still alive and is now Madame Mass, left those items on Atlantis in his desk because she knew Tony would find them and eventually find the trident for them. Then, Namor starts up his fog machine and Tony beelines it for Zemo and the trident. Tony is easily defeated and Rhodey picks him up and starts to take him below deck. But they see that the Nazis have captured Pepper! The Nazis boat away to their submarine and then launch a torpedo at the boat, blowing it up. But it is revealed that Tony, Rhodey, Namor, and all of his crew survived by taking the actual Dorma, which is a, like, Nautilus-looking sea vessel, and then Tony goes unconscious. Flashback time! So, Tony is a little kid sitting up in a tree playing with his Mandarin figure. Get it? When Howard Stark comes screaming about the Germans coming to take him back to the camp, Tony calms him down, and then Howard shows him his blueprint for the robot soldier. Then Howard starts coughing up blood, and he tells Tony to have Jarvis take him on an adventure. Back in the present, Tony is awoken by Jarvis on the Stark airship, and Tony and Rhodey talk, which ends with Rhodey telling Tony that he got a different job position in Paris. Cut to Tony and Alfred arguing. You see, Tony is planning on taking his Iron Man arm back to wherever the hell Zemo and Strucker are, rescuing Piper and getting the trident. Jarvis tells him that he'll only last a few hours before the charge dies. Tony tells Jarvis to shut up and get the charging station ready. Then, Tony, Rhodey, and Jarvis make their game plan. Zemo and Strucker are in an old Norwegian castle, and they are currently waiting for a transport for the trident. Meanwhile, in the castle dungeons, Madame Mask is like torturing Pepper Potts by whipping her. And then Pepper tells him that the allies will stop them. And Strucker just walks over to her and lets her know that nobody is coming to save her. And then he tells her a story about the previous owner of the castle, a man who fought the Nazis like a Norse god. And when he ran out of ammo, he fought them with a hammer. Then, Strucker holds up a skull with long blonde locks and a winged helmet. Then, Tony and Rhodey drop from the airship in their giant metal suits, which look pretty fucking cool, and they kick some Nazi ass and make their way through the castle. As they are walking around, Tony is grabbed by a giant metal hand, pulling him through the ground and coincidentally right in front of Pepper and Zemo. It is revealed that the giant hand was from a giant robot. The exact same robot that his father had been working on years prior. Tony wonders how they stole his father's design. Then Zemo walks over to him, and he removes his mask, revealing Howard Stark. Holy shit, I bet you didn't see that coming. Strucker reveals that while Howard was a POW, he was injected with Zemo a chemical substance, which you can read what it stands for here. It reshapes the chosen areas of a brain, achieving brainwashing in as little as a few weeks. They allowed Howard to return back home while the Zemo took effect. Then they faked his death and brought him to work for them. In anger, Tony punches the giant robot off of him, and Rhodey finally arrives down some, like, stairs even though he could have just jumped down the hole that was created by the robot, but whatever. I guess he just wanted to kill more Nazis before he headed down there. So, Tony and Rhodey meet up, and then Tony grabs Pepper, but 
mask slams a giant battle axe into Tony's back, but she is clocked by Pepper. Shit, she punched that jade mask. That's gotta hurt a lot more. Anyway, Tony then grabs Rhodey and Pepper and turns into a motorcycle? Holy shit, this armor is so much cooler than his normal armor. Marvel, I know you're watching this video. Whenever Tony comes back from his, like, stupid healing coma technology ghost thing, you should give him this armor. So, Tony drives out of the castle and races along the cliffs before ramping off into the airship. Tony gets Pepper and Rhodey to safety, and with only 10% power remaining, flies back to the castle. Back at the castle, Strucker and Zemo are discussing the trident when Tony slams his fist right into Strucker's face and makes a quip. He basically slaughters Nazis as his repulsor power slowly dies. Then Zemo opens some giant doors to reveal at least seven of those giant robots. Tony gets fucking thrown around and manhandled by the robots, and then he gets slammed into the trident holding case and falls to the ground. And as he's lying there, Strucker monologues. He walks closer and closer to Tony, taunting him and saying that he will be the new Zemo. Then Tony grabs the trident and, like, activates it, causing, like, electricity or lightning or whatever to explode from it, destroying the castle and just fucking everything. It blows the shit up. Tony is launched off the cliffs and into the ocean, where he slowly sinks as his suit deactivates. But luckily, Namor pulls up in the Lady Dorma. A week later, Tony is in the hospital answering questions from, like, two reporters, and he has decided to retire from adventuring. And so he, Pepper, and Rhodey talk for a little bit, and he reaches for the telephone saying that he has to make a call since some general, Fury or Flurry or whatever, contacted him about some lunatic in Latveria. The book ends with the cover of the newest issue of Marvels, a magazine of men's adventures. The end?